Hi, and in case you're wondering why I've got this sheet of paper in front of me, stay tuned and I'll show you. No, it's not an origami thing. It's actually a very brief illustration of how books are traditionally made, not necessarily how they're made today, um, but it's where they get their size categories from. You have to imagine what an original printing press would have looked like. Well, actually you don't because here's a picture of one. But you need to know that a press would have been set up to print several pages or even a dozen and more pages at the same time, then turned over and repeated. Then the sheet is folded. And folded again. And again. Now they may be folded smaller than this, but we'll leave it at this size just for illustration purposes. These folded sheets are called gatherings and they're placed together, helps enormously if they're actually placed in the right order, and then they're sewn together. Without going into all the various intricate stages of the craft of bookbinding, the gatherings are then attached to the cover traditionally in well, sometimes wood, um, but then most mainly leather or cloth. So depending on how many times this initial sheet is folded, the book takes its size. And like so many literary terms, it's in Latin. Put simply, for like everything to do with books, there are deviations. But one folded sheet becomes a folio, folded again quarto, then octavo, which is this size, and so on, right down to 64 leaves. Imagine how small that, that will be. The size is all having Latin names and some of them are actually quite unpronounceable. But they are not definitive sizes. An octavo book, for instance, will be eight or nine inches tall, give or take a bit. Well, why so, I hear you ask? Well, it's simply because the sheet of paper you start off with determines the size. And that, of course, is dependent on the size the paper mill chooses to make the original sheet of paper. That trade is very different nowadays, of course, but book sizes still follow the traditional rules. So if you look carefully at an oldish book like this one, and find the middle of one of those gatherings, you'll see the threads holding all in place. This one here, this one here, and here. Let's just show you a close up there. Just get a paper knife up underneath it. Just there, that's it. Here's some examples of even older traditionally bound books. This one is 1714 made exactly in the way that I've just described. Now, if you've ever looked closely at a book of this sort of age, you may have noticed something quite curious at the bottom of each page. If you look closely, there's a word printed just below the bottom margin of every page. There's one here, there's one here, one here, just find a better example. There's a word here. I'll give you some examples. All right, the word down below here is threatened. This one is attempted. And this one is of. Well, some of you may know why this is, but if you don't, it's there to act as a guide for the binder, because in every case, whatever the word is here will appear as the first word on the next page here. So the compositor will put that in the press as a matter of course, while the typesetting is being done. The pages will be numbered, of course, but it's there as a double check. While I've got this book, I'll just show you the spine. 
the horizontal bands across it are there for a function. They're actually cords that hold the page block to the spine covered in the leather finish. And if you were paying attention to last week's video, you'll know that this is a solid spine. However, later bookbinding methods ceased to use cords like these, but the raised bands were kept and often adorned simply because they look so attractive. If we move on to a later binding, you'll see what I mean. This is a hollow spine book and the bands are purely decorative. And the book is a lovely example of what's called a fine binding. It's not a particularly rare or valuable book, but it certainly has appeal. It's a copy of Stanley's Search for Dr. Livingstone, published 1890. And this is actually described as a new and cheaper edition. But look at the workmanship. Full leather binding, gilt titles and decor, marbled edges, marbled end papers. Marbling is an artistic process, which I won't go into now. Suffice it to say, it's just more lavishness being applied to the book. It's printed on good quality paper, altogether a much finer binding than the previous book I showed you, and has one of the things I love a book to contain, especially if it's a travel and adventure book, and there's lots of mentions of places in the text. A fold out map. In its day, the price of a book like this would have been way out of the reach of an ordinary person, probably more than a month's wages. Now it's nearer half a day's, which just shows how things have changed. But a work of art certainly, and will easily outlast most of the modern books produced today. Well, I hope that's given you a peek into the craft of printing and bookbinding. Once again, thanks for watching, and thanks to all the new subscribers who've joined the channel. Happy reading.